Hi, and welcome to the Library 2035 Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries webcast. My name is Sandy Hirsch, and I'm the editor of the book. I am pleased to host this webcast series featuring several of the book's contributing authors who will share their vision for libraries over the next decade. Today, I welcome Kelvin Watson, author of Chapter 15, Libraries of the Future, Adapting Our Mission and Our Buildings to Demographic Growth and Change. Kelvin Watson is the Executive Director of the Las Vegas Clark County Library District, the largest library district and library system in Nevada, 25 branches, 650 employees, and spanning 8,000 square miles of Clark County. Throughout Chapter 15, Kelvin Watson highlights the importance of advocating and promoting the library brand, something that touches upon every aspect of the library as an organization, its space, partnerships, workforce, and services. He advocates for awe-inspiring spaces that welcome and connect with people from all walks of life and support opportunities for connection, exploration, and learning. To accomplish, th accomplish this, he emphasizes how libraries will need to build effective partnerships throughout the community and continuously innovate programming that is built upon non-traditional ideas. So welcome, Kelvin Watson. I'm excited to talk to you today. Hi, Sandy. How are you? I'm good. good. <laughs> well, I, as I said, I'm really excited to talk to you today about your vision. So let's kick it off with um, you telling me a little bit briefly about what your vision for the future of libraries is in 2035. So my my vision really encompasses, as you as you highlighted, the things that are in Chapter 15 is about the partnerships. Right. I have learned in my um, career, as well as having put things into um, place and executing, is that the partnerships have been key. When, when I look at what our our library physical spaces have become, that we're no longer book warehouses, but that we are a community center, a community space that encompasses all of the partnerships, right, from outside of the library. And those include things like our sports teams. Those include our educational partners. Those include the businesses that we have in our communities. Those include the, the other government services that we also have in our communities and how the library is a tool to actually leverage gaining access to those partners. So that's my vision. My vision is really about how the library is a, is a is not the my library or your library it's really about the community the partnerships and that we are all in it together that's great and i think that's such an important uh, message and theme and really is a great uh, a summary of of what uh, libraries represent and need to represent in the future so can you talk a little bit about what you are most concerned about as we look ahead into the future? What I'm most concerned about actually are the um, the influences outside of the library um, mm -hmm. that take away from um, that can take away from our work. Right. Mm -hmm. And those involve the the not. You know, those involve the intellectual freedom issues that libraries are dealing with now. And I, and I, and I foresee those continuing um, for the next few years uh, as we kind of go. They're kind of cyclical, but we're experiencing those again in that everybody's viewpoint is not being being heard. And they're coming to the library, both of those viewpoints, and that we're having to, um, I'll say referee, but we are the place, and I say this a lot, that we're actually the last bastion of democracy. That's the library. We are democracy. We don't, we, and that's how we should see ourselves. And so my concerns are having um, to deal with those issues, but also preparing our future librarians to recognize and understand what our roles are and that we have to be, um, I don't want to use the word neutral, but we have to understand both sides of the issues and 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 have both sides heard and it's not it's not our side it's not kelvin's side it's not sandy's side it is the side of this is the library 
This is democracy. This is what intellectual freedom is all about. And that is listening and understanding what both voices are saying. And how do we come together? The library is the place and the space to come together and not be the divider. Yes, I think that you that that's uh, raised important points about the intellectual freedom issues that I think you're absolutely right. Um, they're not going away in the near future, and we certainly need to be figuring out ways to address those concerns. On a more positive side, what are you most <laughs> excited about um, the future? Well, you know, I'm most excited about um, you know, we touched on the partnerships. I'm excited living in Las Vegas about just the partnerships <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, you know, Vegas is this place where it's no longer about the gambling and entertainment. For example, we're we're becoming known as the sports place. Right? We're bringing all these t- sports teams into our community. We're bringing all of this, um, uh, the the buildings, you know, there's still building going on. There's so when, for me, when I say buildings, what I'm thinking about here are the additional partners that Kelvin can work with in the future. Right. So I'm excited about what the future can be based on the present and how I'm seeing things evolve. And so that's what I'm excited about here. What I'm excited about um, nationally and internationally when it comes to libraries is that there has been in this probably the past couple of years a lot there's been a lot more conversation about the library in the media positive right positive like here's this is how people are using the library people are still using the library um and that's what i'm excited about as well um in that people are still you know uh engaging with the libraries since we've come out of covid they we we've added more um users uh through our through the digital experience and now people are actually starting to come back into the physical space to experience what we have for example the 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 shows and the, the the you know we have theaters here in Las Vegas so they're coming back in to experience those things um uh, the the different performances um and the events um and that's what I'm excited about I'm excited about like so many things you know, we just celebrated uh, nationally 50 years of hip hop and that the library libraries actually played a significant role in promoting 50 years of hip hop, for example. So what happens in the next, you know, 20, 30 years, 20, 35, right? Where are we going to be? I'm, I'm excited about what, what the future is. That's great. Uh, and what do you think has had the biggest impact on libraries over the past decade? Certainly the past, tech, just technology in, in general, <laughs> um, technology in general, right? Because, um, you know, 10 years ago, um, we didn't have certainly a cell phone usage wasn't where, we, where it is now. Um, you know, 10 years ago, we most of us probably had CD players or some may, maybe still had cassette players in our cars. Those aren't there anymore. And that actually people are able to uh, leverage the digital resources that the library has, like, for example, in the cars, right? The cell phones, um, you know, people walking. So, t- you know, when I'm watching people walking, they're self, they're listening to something, whether it's music or, uh, you know, um, or, or books. Um, and so certainly technology, um, we've got artificial intelligence now being more used. We're looking at machine learning and how libraries can access that and be more um, make things more accessible to our the folks that we serve. And so um, I would can say 10 years technology. I would say 10 years from now, it'll be technology as well. <laughs> well, that was my next question. Oh, what will have sorry. the biggest question? <laughs> You're a mind reader. Uh, what will have the biggest impact on libraries in the next 10 years? So you, you, you say technology as well. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be technology, connectivity, um, you know, the focus... 10 years, um, 20 years ago uh, was about leveraging and, and making sure that we were um, bridging the digital divide. And I think that we're making some inroads and strides, but we still have a long way to go. And certainly th- that's tied to technology as well. Right. 
STEAM learning, robotics. These are the 3D printing. These are all the things that um, we're leveraging in libraries, not just in libraries in general. We're all leveraging those uh, those things. And we've moved from, you know, maker spaces to just spaces and, 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 and tools and resources. And um, yeah, so technology 10 years from now, um, 20 years from now, it'll be technology. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, uh, in a few months uh, ago, since you submitted your chapter, ha- has anything has your thinking changed at all um, since you wrote your chapter? No, I mean, um, I think um, that we've we've you know we've we we continue to be in this place and space of marketing the library, having people see the library in a different view, um, and those are the things that. I again focus on leveraging partnerships, right? So it's a, it's sometimes about people uh, people being partners coming to the library or us going out to the partner to ask them, hey, can you do you want to work with the library or can we talk to your you know can we talk to your employees about the library or can we talk to your customers about the library? And now it's pe- it's those partners coming to the library to want to be a part of what we're doing, be a part of our outreach, be a part of, you know, that connectivity. They're, they're recognizing that we are, again, we're no, we're not just about books and I have the opportunity uh, and I take the opportunity uh, as the director to even still tour people around Mm -hmm. the library where I'm, Mm -hmm. so they get to actually, you know, I'm touring people and I'm excited. So, it hasn't it hasn't changed. I'm you know, I'm I'm really close to what we what we do. And um that that helps me think um my team um you know as well. So, you know, that no, nothing's changed. It's only got me more much more excited. That's great. That's really great. Um Okay, you mentioned earlier um in a, an interview about the um you know the importance of training. Uh, future librarians uh, and, uh, you know, about some of the changes and changed ways of thinking. So I was wondering if you have any advice for information professionals as they look toward the future in the next 10 years. Yeah, my, my advice would be um, to be open um, to different ideas, to different viewpoints, um, and that, you know, with all the challenges that we have, We still have to think about our core and the core of what we do as librarians. Um, So before I became a librarian, um, I worked with librarians. As you know, Sandy, I was on the sales side. So I actually would go and meet with librarians and try to sell them, you know, the books. You know, the book is the book is the book, right? Um, So one To Kill a Mockingbird from one vendor or supplier is the same To Kill a Mockingbird at another, right? Right. Price pretty much pretty is the same. So that's so convincing someone to buy something from me versus the competitor. I had I had to change people's minds, so they had to change, and that's what then. And it's the same thing now. I, I use that as an example, but we have to be open again to other viewpoints, and some of those viewpoints don't align with ours. They don't align. And but we still have to remember again the core, the uh, things about democracy, things about sharing of information and making sure that we're getting the right information to people and that we're and, and maybe even educating the people who have those different viewpoints. That's what we have to remember. And that's would be my advice, right? Because when we get so in our lane that we're not able to see outside it. That's when it causes us actually more problems and issues than not. And is there anything that information professionals can do to better prepare for that desired future? I think, you know, some of that deals with our, um, you know, how we educate the um, our, our future uh, you know, information professionals. Um, you know, I think um, that we need to incorporate not just, you know, some of the, a lot more of those softer skill trainings, but really 
you know, um, maybe including a lot more uh, business acumen type, you know, training when we're, when we're, when we're learning, right? Because businesses, the, the successful ones, and we got plenty of them to look at successful businesses, how they, how they became successful. And I think, and, and remain successful, right? And so that's what I think we need to consider um, including. I know there's been lots of conversation over the years, but consider including in how we train our, our future librarians. That's great. And then what key competencies do you think librarians will need to thrive in 2035? Certainly, um, Competencies like, competencies like uh, social <laughs> skills, uh, you mm-hmm. know, being, you know, even if you're an, an introvert, try to, you know, try to move towards to be more of an extrovert, you know, be, be more welcoming to, uh, you know, to everyone. I think, um, again, the competencies around um, the business competencies, right, mm-hmm. understanding how those work. And then I think, um, you know, and this may not, this isn't such a competency, but recognizing that diversity, equity, inclusion, and uh, accessibility are not just about race and gender, but they're about where people are from, where people grew up, you know, where people went to school, right? How people, what kind of family you were in. I think we need to look at diversity um, in a much broader context. Mm And that'll be, that's how we will be successful. I have one last question for you. Okay, and that is to, if you can define your view of the future of libraries in six words or less. <laughs> or less. Okay. So I, I think um, that those six words I will use is uh, are around, I'm going to use six of them from our strategic playbook that we have here. And I'm going to start with powerful partners, powerful uh, places, and I'm going to end with powerful people. Those six words. And if we think in a powerful, you know, from a powerful uh, standpoint, that that will be successful. That's great. (laughs) Thank you so much. So thank you so much, Kelvin Watson, for joining me today. And thank you for your contribution to Library 2035, Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries. It has been a pleasure talking with you today and hearing your future, your vision about the future of libraries. So thank you so much. You're welcome, Sandy. Thanks for having me. And thanks for including me. And thank you for attending this webcast with Kelvin Watson, author of Chapter 15, Libraries of the Future, Adapting Our Mission and Our Buildings to Demographic Growth and Change. To view additional author webcasts from this Library 2035 webcast series, please visit this link or use the QR code on your screen. And thank you for attending.